Today I'm using all drugstore products to show you how to create this easy, simple St. Patrick's Day makeup look. Hey guys, welcome back. I hope that you're having a great day today. If you are new to my channel, my name is Julie and I post mainly get ready with me videos focused on affordable drugstore makeup. I want to show you that you do not need to spend a lot of money to have really great makeup. So if that resonates with you, I would love for you to subscribe and become part of our affordable beauty community here on my channel. In today's Get Ready With Me, my two kitty cats, Peps and Salem, make some appearances. <laughs> this is a great way to just have like a pop of color for St. Patrick's Day. It looks really classy and sophisticated, like not too much. And if you didn't want quite as large of a wing, you could just do a really small one or you could not do a wing at all and just do like a little bit of green eyeliner. I just think it looks so pretty. I'm just priming my face with my e.l.f. liquid poreless putty primer. We have my cat Pep Pep in here, but she can't decide if she wants to lay up in the chair or not. You gonna get up in the chair, Pep Pep? You gonna get up in the chair and lay down? Uh, for my foundation, I'm just using the Believe Beauty Skin-like foundation or Skin Finish foundation, I think. Yeah, Skin Finish. Pet Pep, you can't get up here, girlfriend. Go get in a chair. I'm just going to dot this all around and then I'm going to blend it out with my dampened Wet n Wild makeup sponge. But like I told you guys in my February Beauty Favorites, I've been loving this combination of the Believe Beauty foundation with the e.l.f. poreless or liquid poreless putty primer they just work so well with each other and i really like the e.l.f. liquid poreless putty primer with all of my foundations it's my favorite primer in my makeup collection like i also have the e.l.f. power grip and I just do not like that one as much as this liquid poreless. But the reason why I like the e.l.f. liquid putty poreless is because it's really moisturizing and it, your foundation glides over it nicely, but it doesn't like slip around. You know, like once you get the foundation blended out, it stays in place. And I do find that that primer helps my foundations to last a little bit longer. And just look better you can find this believe beauty foundation at dollar general or at pop shelf and i'll have all of my products that i'm using today and also makeup tools listed and linked down in the description box so just go and expand that and you will be and you'll be able to see everything there so i'm just adding a little bit more coverage to the center of my face here See, little Pep Pep finally got in her chair, didn't you, little Pep Peps? Enjoy that chair, little Pep Pep. <laughs> She's so adorable. I'm just going to brighten my under eye circles, like my dark under eye circles. Not that they're like super dark, but I'm just going to use my e.l.f. putty color correcting eye brightener. And I find that when I use this, I don't have to use as much under eye concealer. And this formula is just so thin and easy to blend out. It doesn't settle into my fine lines. And then for the under eye concealer, I'm using the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser. So I'm just going to put a little bit here in the inner corner of my eye. And I'm going to take a little bit out here. I found that I can use slightly a little bit more of this concealer than like some of my other concealers because it is a little bit more lighter coverage. It's not as thick as like my Tarte Shape Tape or the e.l.f. Camo concealers or like the um, Natasha Denona High Glam. Like all of those concealers are really thick and full coverage. This one's a little bit more lightweight. And then I'm just going to add a little bit more concealer like right in between like where my under eye meets like my cheekbone. I've been doing this technique to 
just like lift my face but not add more concealer to my under eye area so I just want to show you guys like how this lifts the face So see the difference between this side and this side, like how this looks more bright and lifted over here. So that's been like my trick to lift the face, but like not add a bunch of extra product to the under eye area. And then I'm just adding a little bit more coverage to my nose as well. And I'm also going to add just slightly a little bit more coverage like around my mouth like in this area here and then for the setting powder today I'm using the Rimmel stay matte this has been my go-to favorite powder right now it just works so well and I think I used to be really intimidated by this powder because of the stay matte I don't necessarily find that it keeps my foundations looking extremely matte throughout the day, but what it does is it just smooths out like your foundation, like makes your pores less visible and it's just like a really finely milled powder so it doesn't look super powdery on your skin. And if I'm using like a dewy foundation and I put this on top, it kind of mattifies it at first. But once I use my setting spray and like throughout the day, like once this powder settles on your skin, it does allow like the dewiness of your foundation to shine through. So it definitely doesn't keep things like completely matte throughout the day, but I do really like this powder and I'm going to use just a little bit of this concealer on my eyelids. I forgot to do this a second ago. But I just want to even out my eyelids before I apply my eyeshadow primer today because I'm going to do a really light eyeshadow look. Okay, and I'm going to take just a little bit more of that powder on my makeup sponge. And I'm going to set my under eye concealer. I went ahead and filled my eyebrows off camera. So I will link down below what I used to fill them in. And now I'm just priming my eyelids with my Milani eyeshadow primer. For this eyeshadow look, it's going to be super simple because it's going to be mostly about the eyeliner. So I'm going to use this new Wet n Wild eyeshadow palette in Gold Whip. I used this the other day um, for the first time and I really, really enjoyed this. This is a really great palette for a barely there eye look so first I am gonna go in with this shade here with just a fluffy brush and I'm going to lightly apply that all over the lid just blending it into the crease I guess not really all over the lid but all in the crease area and I'm not doing anything super precise just using circular motions and blending it back and forth, just kind of setting the whole area. If some of it gets on the eyelid, it's not a big deal. Just like a nice kind of wash of color to set the eyeshadow primer and to give, you know, your crease a little bit more definition. I think we have Salem in here now somewhere. <laughs> um, next, I'm gonna take this shade here and I'm using a flat shader brush and I'm just going to apply that shade all over the eyelid and kind of up into the crease. Then I'm going to take this single shadow from CoverGirl. This is Salem. Get out of the curtain, weirdo. <laughs> Why are you in the shower curtain? Or not shower curtain. Why are you in the window curtain? Hmm? See, this is why I normally don't leave the door open because it is a huge distraction. Okay, so back to the eyeshadow. So I'm going to use the CoverGirl Eye Enhancers in French Vanilla. I might have to make him get out and shut the door because he's going to be too distracting for me. Um, I'm just using the little sponge that came with this eyeshadow and I'm just going to apply that here underneath the brow bone 
just to add a little bit of a highlight and to just lift the eye up a little bit. And then I'm going to take a little bit more of this and I'm going to put it here in the inner corner of my eye. Might use a smaller brush to apply that. Just right in there. Okay, so I made Salem go out of the room because he was being too distracting. <laughs> so I'm going back with a little bit more of the shade here and I'm going to blend at the top of the crease where it meets that white. I'm going to take just a little bit of this dark brown here on the tip of my Sigma Pencil E30 and I'm just going to smudge some of this down here just to create a little bit of a shadow. For the green eyeliner, what I'm going to do for this is I'm actually going to use eyeshadow and this is one of the e.l.f. Bite Size palettes in Hot Jalapeno. So I'm taking an eyeliner, just like an angled brush here, just looks like this. And I got this one from Essence. I'll link it down below. I'm going to take a makeup setting spray. This is MAC Fix Plus, but you could use any setting spray. And I'm going to mist it on the brush here. And then I'm going to kind of dab off the excess spray on a paper towel. Then I'm going to get down here because I don't want to mess up the eyeshadow in the middle, but I'm just going to get a little bit of that eyeshadow on the edge of the brush. And then I am going to line my eyes with this shade. And I'm going to mix this color with the darker. So if you need more shadow, you can dip your brush back into the shadow. But I'm going to slowly kind of thicken the line. But this technique works with any eyeshadow. So this is great if you don't want to buy a bunch of eyeliners that are different colors. And I just find that this is much easier to apply this way. So I got a little bit more shadow on the brush and now I'm going to mist it this way too. So the key is to just have the brush pretty like damp. And that setting spray is really going to help this to keep the shadow lasting. But if you wanted to keep the eyeshadow, or if you wanted to keep the eyeliner looking lighter like this, you could just leave it. But I want to deepen this up, so I'm gonna go in with a darker shade. Okay, so now I'm gonna get some of the darkest green on the edge of this liner brush. And I'm gonna mist it again with the setting spray. I mean, you could do it either way, like where you missed it before or after. And then I'm just going to go over top. I just find that if I mix these two colors together, I get more of like a shamrock green. Because if you just use the dark green, it can look a little, um, just kind of like a deep forest, almost teal kind of color. So that's why I like to mix the two. And then also I kind of just leave the front part of the eyelid with that lighter green so it kind of creates more of like an ombre effect. I'm just taking this detailer brush from Real Techniques and I think I might have gotten on this side just a little too heavy handed with the um, setting spray because it kind of made the shadow kind of bleed um, but I'm just going on top of the liner with just a little bit more of that dark green and I'm gonna smoke it out so it has more of a softer edge and then I'm just gonna smoke the set out
And then I am going to take just a little bit more of this green and just smudge it here just on the lower lash line like this last little portion. And I do kind of feel like the left side here, like this liner is just like too far down and all that. So I'm going back with a Q-tip and kind of wiping some of the like shadow away so I can get them a little bit more even. And I'm gonna go back with a little bit more concealer. Just kind of showing you what to do if you make some mistakes. <laughs> See, even I make mistakes sometimes. Just going back with the sponge and just kind of sharpen up the edge. Okay, so that's what the liner looks like. Really cute, green, just like festive. So before I finish out the rest of the eyes, I'm gonna go ahead and finish out the face. So for bronzer today, I'm gonna to be using the e.l.f. contour palette. And I'm using this brush that I got from a Wet n Wild, or Wet n Wild, <laughs> from an Amazon brush set. And I'll have that linked below, but I've really been enjoying this brush set so much. And this brush works so well for applying bronzer, like with that tapered tip. So I'm just buffing that bronzer. And then this is the great thing about this brush. So, you know, like this way you can be like really precise. Then if you get some more like on the side of the brush, then you can go up on the hairline and kind of stamp it. And then it just blends so nicely because of like that tapered edge. And it still gets like a large area because it is pretty large on that side. So that's why I've really been enjoying this shape of brush for bronzer. And it also works well in doing like soft contouring on the nose because you can use the pointed side to go down the sides on the tip there. And then the only thing that this brush doesn't work well with bronzing is like getting your neck. It's a little too small for that. So I like to use a larger powder brush and just get up underneath like the jawline and bronze up the neck with that brush. And then sometimes I'll get just like a little bit more on the brush and then just kind of go over the edges of where I've used the other brush just to blend out any harshness. And then I'm gonna come back and use the highlights out of this palette here in a second. But for blush, I'm gonna be using the Wet n Wild Color Icon Blush in Mellow Wine. Just a nice like rosy terracotta color. Kind of applied it really heavy right there. So I'll show you what to do if you accidentally like apply too much blush. If you go back with your makeup sponge or if you're not using a makeup sponge, you can go back with like your bronzer brush, like the fluffy one and just kind of buff that out. But if you're using a foundation brush or sponge, you can just go back around the edges And sometimes I'll do this like a couple of times, like where I'll just go over it to blend it out and then I'll go back with whatever was left on the brush. Like don't add any, add any more blush to it, to the brush, and just go over the edges so it adds a little bit of color, but not too much and it just kind of blends a little bit more. But I just find a really pretty like peachy or rosy blush looks nice with green. And then, like I said, for the highlight, I'm going back with the e.l.f. Contra palettes, and I'm gonna use that shade right there for the highlight. It's such a pretty highlight, nothing too intense. It's really subtle, like a subtle um, champagne gold. I 
don't know if you can hear Pep Pep, she's snoring. Oh my gosh, she is so cute right now. I might take a picture. It's like as soon as I got the mic over there, she stopped snoring. <laughs> That's how it always works. If only Salem would just lay down up there. He never lays up there, but she does. So, so now I'm going to set everything with my setting spray. And I will link some drugstore options down below, but I'm just using the Urban Decay All Nighter. I'm just gonna curl my lashes up with my Tarte Eyelash Curler, and then for mascara, I'm using my e.l.f. Lash Extender, and this is in the shade Soft Black. Then for lips, I'm going to line them with this Milani Color Statement Lip Liner in Spice. And on top of that lip liner, I'm using the Burt's Bees Lip Shimmer in Caramel. And I'm going to add just slightly a little bit more blush. I always find that after I do my lipstick, well not always, but sometimes I find that when I do my lipstick, I need to intensify my blush a little bit more. If you did enjoy this, give this video a thumbs up. And thank you so much for spending time with me today. I hope that you guys have a great day and I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye. You shouldn't doubt yourself because you're a work of art. You, you should know that you are perfect with